Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the intro. Um, so yeah, I'm here today representing Inboarder. We are the world's first and only experience-driven onboarding platform. Uh, for those that don't know us, and I'm aware there'll be in, a few in the room that haven't heard of Emborder, we were founded in 2015, so we're a four-year-old technology company, very much in the kind of scale-up um, stage of our growth, at least. We have maybe 60 employees across four different offices worldwide, though we're headquartered in Sydney, so we're an Aussie tech company. I'm based in London, lots of the team are here today, too. Uh, we also have offices in North America and India. And today we work with somewhere north of 250 or so customers globally. And uh, that includes some of the world's biggest and best known brands. And I think, quite interestingly, every one of these organizations had their own ideas, philosophies, objectives around what they wanted onboarding to look like. And, you know, if you're Clifford Chance or McDonald's, they're likely to be quite different. But all of those organizations have chosen and trusted Emborder to deliver that. And I think, if anything, that shows how flexible and customizable the platform is. It doesn't matter if you're a global law firm or, you know, a fast food restaurant. The platform's perfectly adaptable to deliver the right brand messaging at any time. So I'm actually going to take a step back, and before talking about onboarding, I wanted to talk about candidate experience. And, and I'll start with a, a statistic. So there are a million professionals today on LinkedIn with the words candidate experience in their job title. So people whose sole responsibility it is to look after and, and care for and nourish candidate experience. And there's no real surprises that that's kind of changed and grown over the past few years. And there's one particular kind of case study that I wanted to highlight. Many of you have probably seen this already. It's a Virgin Media case study. Is there anyone from Virgin Media in the room? Or who used to work at Virgin Media? Probably a good thing. Um, <laughs> so, so Virgin Media had feedback time and again that their recruitment process, or at least the candidate experience, part of it was, was wholly broken. The career site was impossible to navigate. It was super difficult to upload things like CVs, covering letters. You know, feedback was fragmented at best. Applications would fall into black holes. People wouldn't hear back. It was feedback that they got time and again, and loud and clear, they recognized it was something that they needed to address. Um, and so they wanted to apply a bit of, kind of maths and science to, to this to understand, OK, well, what's it costing us as a business? And they were able to work out that they were rejecting somewhere north of 120,000 applications per year. So that's people that are ultimately at the wrong end of a really poor recruitment experience or candidate experience. Now, interestingly, of those 123,000, 6% would go on to disconnect their Virgin Media subscription. So they'd cancel it and, and move to, say, Sky or another competitor. The average spend per month for a Virgin Media contract is about £50, and so annualised, they were able to theorise that they were losing something like £4.5 million per year in revenue, which is pretty interesting. So it's not just consumer brands that are at risk here, and the additional consequences, as identified by an organisation called TalentLift, they're a kind of talent research platform, suggest that 63% of job seekers will go on to reject a job entirely based on a poor candidate experience. 72% that feel as though they had a bad experience will go on to tell others about it, either in person or online. And again, things like Glassdoor today make that very easy to do. And then, much like the Virgin Media story, 64% of people who've had a poor candidate experience would be less likely to buy goods and services from that employer. So, you know, big issue, something that's definitely recognised. Unsurprisingly then, today, significant parallels have been drawn between recruitment and marketing. And some of the core philosophies and principles that govern things like marketing funnels have been applied to recruitment. And again, think about you know, super easy to navigate career sites, one-click application processes, automated feedback, chatbots that talk you through the process. Like all of that stuff comes from marketing historically. And so today what that means is recruitment is a, is a really heavy investment for most organizations. And again, if you think about you know, the cost of an applicant tracking system, a beautiful employer branding agency, um, gamified assessment, chatbots, you know, there's, there's no end really to the investment that you can make in the recruitment process. But what we see time and again is this complete kind of drop off of, of investment in experience as soon as a new hire assign their offer letter. And why is it that for so many organizations that focus on, on experience just ceases the moment that an offer letter is signed? And that's what we're talking about today. Um, so onboarding by definition, and this is a, it's a kind of an Oxford English, English dictionary definition of onboarding, not really our one, but the process of integrating a new employee into an organization. And so a, a few statistics, and this is interesting too, so this is a Kronos study. 76% of HR leaders say that their onboarding processes are underutilized. The remaining 24% say they don't have a strategy for onboarding at all. And that's particularly interesting given that 2% of new hires will leave a job after a disastrous first day or they won't show up at all. 
22% of staff turnover will, will happen within the first 45 days of employment, and 90% of new hires have decided whether they'll stay or leave an organisation within the first six months of joining. And so for us, it becomes less about, okay, how do their call centres are all monitored, and then they're assessed to see how satisfied the customer was, and they were pretty negative. So they have no issue in attracting and hiring people, but they have massive issues in training them and retaining them. And they wanted to understand why this was, so they, they drafted these three professors in to run an experiment. Uh, and that experiment was relatively simple. They took 1,000 new hires that were going to be placed within call centres in India, and they split them into three cohorts. Cohort number one went through the traditional onboarding approach, which was you know, what they'd always done. They weren't expecting any additional results or different results here, so that was just a control group. The second group of onboardees were put through a slightly different onboarding experience, which was centred around the company. So they, they started to reinforce things like the culture, the mission, the vision, the values, and they made sure that all of the things that were used to attract individuals to the organisation were reinforced through the onboarding process. The third group w w went through an entirely different experience. It was less about the company, it was all about them. So the company decided to invest significant time in learning about the individuals they were hiring, spending time you know, introducing them to senior leaders, asking them to describe you know, instances of when they considered themselves to be their best self, which is an interesting notion that the research paper kind of touches on. If anyone's interested in it, by the way, I have it and I'll happily share it afterwards. So three different cohorts. And, and what was fascinating about this study was that they were then able to follow those three cohorts into their first weeks and months. And the results, frankly, were incredible. So staff turnover, turnover after the first six months for the control group was as standard, 50%, same as what they'd always got. The group that had spent time with uh, the organisational identity session, that turnover had reduced by 16%. But for the group that went through the personal identity session, that had reduced by 57%. Similar story with customer satisfaction scores. So I mentioned that they monitor all of the calls. And again, for the group that went through control, customer satisfaction was 61%. The group that went through the organisational se um, session, that had in increased to 66%. But again, for the group that went through the personal session, the ones where they'd really kind of spent time learning about the individuals, that had increased to 72%. And so what they were re really able to conclude as part of this research is, and this is, bear in mind, this was an enormous academic research paper. This one-liner doesn't do it justice, but it's kind of my interpretation of it. We're not just looking for organisations that are going to be really authentic about things like culture and values. More so today, we're looking for organisations that are going to be welcoming and accepting of us as individuals. And I think that's a really interesting and important sentiment to think about when redesigning onboarding. So the only part of the platform that I'm going to show today is... is it's really kind of more concept than anything else. And for those of you that have your phones in the room, great, because I'm going to ask you to text your name to a number in a second. But just to give you a sense as to what Emboarder is, we are a workflow-based tool designed to guide new hires and their managers through the onboarding process. So the end user is not just the new hire, but it's the hiring manager too. It's usually owned by HR, sometimes resourcing, sometimes L&D, who use it to design very beautiful, very engaging digital content. And that content can be anything from image and video through to you know, virtual reality office tours that deliver at the right moment in time, through to forms to learn and understand about the new hires that you're joining. Pretty much there's, there's no kind of limitation to what you can build, but that content will then deliver over bespoke timelines relevant to that new hire. The new hire and manager add their details, so they, they choose how they'd like it to communicate with them, and their options are text message, email, Slack, or workplace. And then periodically across these timelines, they'll receive messages. Each message contains a link. They click the link and Border opens within their device's browser, delivering the content that HR have created. Crucially, what that means is there are no apps to download. There are no systems to log into, into. There are no portals to seek and find. It's not a case of saying, here's all the information. Grab it when you need. It's drip feeding information at the moments that really matter. So most of you are probably going, kind of get it, like to see it, not really sure. So if you do have your phones to hand, text your first name to the number that you see on the screen now. What that will do is drop you into a mock Vodafone workflow. It's not a real one, and Vodafone are talking uh, later this afternoon, so there's some of their branding in there, but it's not exactly how they use it, but it will give you a really good concept as to exactly how this works. Now, you'll, after you've texted your first name, you'll receive a message addressed to you as a new hire. I've chosen text for this example, um, but you'll receive a text that will be personalised to you. Within it will be a link. When you click the link, you'll go through to a couple of, of example experiences that I've created, and that will give you a really neat sense as to exactly what this looks like. There'll be three things in there. There'll be a content page, which is similar to the one that you saw earlier. There'll be a company benefits portal. And then there'll be a form that I've designed to learn about new hires. And there's some text messages going off, which is always a good sign. Mm -hmm. um, if you complete that form and click submit, you'll get a second message addressed to you as the hiring manager. So you'll be able to get a real sense as to what this looks and feels like from a new hire's perspective, as well as the hiring manager. 
I'll give everyone a few seconds to do that. Yeah, so the Wi-Fi again for anyone that might need it is PGC Public Internet, uh, Cafe Set, C-A-F-E-C-E-N-T. Oh, is it? It worked earlier on, but... So hopefully for those of you that have got where that message has come through, if you do have a reliable network provider, hopefully Vodafone, um, <laughs> hopefully that will come through. Oh, interesting. Quite often if it's not something that's, if, if you're using work phones, it might well be blocked if it's not work phones. Oh, interesting. Oh, it could well be the <laughs> Wi-Fi maybe for here, who knows? Maybe, yeah. Okay. If that hasn't worked and if it's if, if the vendors if the, the Wi-Fi at the venue isn't allowing that, that's odd. But um, when you go out and use your own 4G, then you'll probably be able to access that. So for those who do have that message, feel free to take a look at that at a later date. Oh, actually, on 4G, 4G it works. Uh, yeah, okay, odd. Their Wi-Fi. All right, so, so I'll, I'll finish this presentation. And just for some food for thought, this is um, a couple of things that you can do when thinking about redesigning your onboarding process. So our customer success team here in London have given some kind of pragmatic advice for those of you thinking about redesigning it. Um, first, it's around being inclusive. So it's, it's really important to do small things like inviting new hires to team events before day one. So within that pre-boarding phase where you're not, you haven't started yet, you might be in your notice period, how can you start to create and foster relationships between new hires and existing team members? It's also important to look at things like policies that might prevent new starters and things like corporate equality. I think this is a, a, a really key one. So personalize and be, mem be memorable. So relevance is key to engagement and one size absolutely doesn't fit all. So how do you onboard different seniorities, different um, job functions, different language capabilities? And how do you get your new hires talking about you? One of the things that we, we really value at Emborder is that most, of, most new hires that are joining organisations that we work with get excited about the messages that, that, that they see and receive and begin showing them to friends and family. And then finally, involve different stakeholders. And, and a big question, one that certainly I'll be posing on the table, is who, who owns the experience? Who's responsible for onboarding? Is it HR? Is it the hiring manager? Is it a buddy or mentor? Or is it indeed a mixture of all of those things? So it's important to think about and consider uh, the individuals that you might need to draft in in order to support. And that's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Steve. And does anyone have any questions um, for Steve at all? No? I, I do have one. So I assume that you can decide what gets sent when to different people. How sort of customizable is that? Do you have a solution that goes, this is what we'd suggest, this is what works best? Or yeah. how does that work? Yeah, totally good question. So it, it's fully customizable. You can start workflows as early as you please. It might be, say, 28 days before day one or, or earlier if you're hiring somebody with, say, a three-month notice period. And they can run as long as you want them to. I'd say the average is probably six months. Most, most of our customers build workflows that run to, say, the end of probation. But we, we do have examples of, of customers using it for, say, a year into role. Um, there is a best pra practice workflow, and it's a template that we've designed. It's based on feedback. It's based on research. It's based on our own best practices. And so, again, many customers use that straight out of the box. They'll customize it. They'll change you know, branding and terminology. Um, but theoretically, you could get it live within a couple of days if you were using that. Excellent. Any other questions? You're just on your phones having a look at <laughs> the uh, things, aren't you? So, excellent. Thank you very cool. much, Steve. Thank Let's you. Go.